sometimes I pronounce it Shaneri, but she's such a lovely woman. And then also prophetess Lorna Baldonado. We have a wonderful uh, singing guest, a psalmist who really loves Jesus. And her name is Whitney Steele. And I'm Pastor Dr. Lorella Meyer. We just joyfully greet you. And we trust the Lord to give you an uplifting message. And it's interesting because sometimes the Lord works exactly opposite to what we think. Even, even in the hardest times, there's an attitude of heart that the Lord talks about. And we're in the season of Thanksgiving. What is Thanksgiving? And so this broadcast is going around the world. It is really an American holiday, but in a sense, it's a holiday that touches every nation because it's based on the Bible. There was a group of Christians who were rather persecuted for their faith. And actually, they came from Holland, they came from England, and they were called the pilgrims. And so they settled it in their heart. They needed to go to a new land where they could have freedom to worship God, where they could establish a Christian community. Wonderful, wonderful hearts. And they were willing to brave many, many, many dangers. And so they got on the Mayflower, I believe it was three ships, if my history is correct. And they lost, actually lost half of their crew through disease and just different things that happened. So here this precious little weather-beaten group of Christians came. And do you know what they did? They got on their knees and thanked God that they were in a land that they could express their love and their worship for the Lord. And so, because it was so rough and disease was rampant, it is interesting that there were friendly Christians, or rather friendly uh, native Indians, and they began to see that this people was kind of in trouble. And so, they taught some of the pilgrim men how to, how to plant corn and many different kinds of crops. And so they had their first Thanksgiving. It was thus later on, many, many years later, that it was made a national holiday. But one thing I want to pick up that's very scriptural was that they rejoiced even in the midst of troubles. And so I believe I've shared a little bit, um, maybe just not quite the story that I would have liked to have told, but I am going to turn it over to Evangelist Shaneri. Praise the Lord. Good to be back here this month. And happy Thanksgiving in advance. I would like to take a look at the book of um, as Psalm 84, in line with what the woman of God just shared with us concerning the pilgrims who settled in this awesome land. I want you to know that they were overcomers. They persevered. And they, they were people of faith. And they, we have cause to thank God for the faith of those people who did not give up. We have cause to give thanks to God for the foundation of our land. We also have cause to thank God that you and I are also pilgrims today and we're still right. moving because we are crossing into the promises of God. We are on our way to the promised Hallelujah. land. And I want to say that we are aware that some of us have found ourselves in Baca, the valley of Baca, which is the valley of tears, the valley of weeping. Something must happen for you to weep. You don't just start weeping. So if you have come to the valley of Baca and you're telling yourself, there is no reason for me to thank God because this Thanksgiving season, things are not just the way they should be and my expectations have not yet, have not yet seen. But I've come to say to somebody that just like our mommy shared here, Dr. Maya shared, these pilgrims were faced with all kinds of things I want to mm -hmm. say they were passing through the valley of Baca. Indeed. And that's what is written here. The psalmist wrote here in Psalm 84, verse 6. If you start from verse 5, it says, Blessed is the man whose strength is indeed 
in whose heart are the ways of them who passing through the valley of Baca make it a well. Do you know that when we're thanking God, even in your valley of Baca, God is there with you. God will strengthen you to dig well even in that valley. And one thing that I have come to understand is that the enemy's tricks is to make sure that we don't have strength to be able to dig when we're passing to our back up because we feel we're already in the valley. There is nothing else we can do. But they were rejoicing in their situations. They were thankful to God and God, because they were, their heart was a heart of, of, of thanksgiving, they have rejoicing even in their trouble, in their affliction. They were not deterred. They were not moved. Nothing was going to stop them. They had a purpose. They were focused. They knew they were going somewhere. And the Bible said they began to dig even in that place. I want to say that I know that a lot of us have been digging in our valley of backup. We have been digging into the word of God. We have been digging our revelation. We have been digging out the word of truth. We have been digging the word of comfort that has been able to comfort us and strengthen us in our days of affliction. And I know that as you have been moving in that, I have come to say to you, you have cause to give thanks to God in this valley of backup. You have cause to thank God because the well you're digging is about to be filled with the rain. Both the former and the latter rain. Supernaturally, God will meet you even in Baca. You will have an encounter with God in Baca, and he will strengthen you and take you to the next level in the name of Jesus. Beautiful. Thanks. Beautiful. All right. All right. Prophetess Lorna, Praise go for the it. Lord. You know, that's so beautiful because, you know, they had a key there. Because even in those times of valleys and Baca and all those different things, because the enemy comes to steal your joy. But there's one thing that we can do, and that's to give thanks in all things. Not thankful for what we're in, the situation we're in, but thankful that God is still on the throne. And because that he is on the throne, as we give thanks, it does something. And I want to show you what it does. It says right here in Psalms 100, it said, enter his gates with thanksgiving. So you're entering into the very gates of God, the very presence of God. It says, and into his courts with praise, and be thankful unto his, him, and bless his name, for the Lord is good. So when you begin to be thankful, you begin to praise God, before you see the victory take place, when you're in that place of hurting, when you're in that place of being crushed, when you're in that place of tears, and you can begin to praise him by faith. Because you know that you are stepping over. You are moving into the hills and you are moving out because what the enemy meant for evil, God will turn it around. And we've come to give you a word of the kingdom today that there is nothing that you cannot turn around with your words. And as you begin to be thankful unto the Lord, that thankfulness, thank you, Lord, you begin to praise him. And as you begin to praise him, you'll become raised in him. And when you become raised in him, you enter the very presence of the Holy Spirit where there is joy unspeakable and full of glory. And you can turn situation, that situation that you're in today, you may be that very one in the Valley of Baca. And we know what it's like. We sit here as ministers today because we've walked in the valleys. Yes. We've been in the places of tears. We know what it is to be in the Valley of Baca. But we also know what it is to have the Holy Spirit say, I give you a keys to the kingdom, beloved. And as you begin to turn that key with your mouth, he said, I'll give you the tongue of the learned. And you begin to speak forth the thankfulness of God that you know that God is not going to leave you there, but that you're going forth. And that's why the enemy comes to steal your joy. He comes to kill, steal your joy and to make you think, what do you have to be thankful for? Because he wants to stop your progression. But we're here today to say there's a dimension and a progression that you are going and entering into the glory of God as you begin to be thankful unto the Lord. Beautiful. And so we have Whitney Steele, who's going to share a song and a little bit of her testimony. Thank you so much. I'm 
truly blessed to be here today. And as I'm listening to you, I'm just um, thinking about the song that I wanted to share. And I must have been in the Valley of Baca when I wrote this song, when the Lord gave me this song. Um, it's actually taken from the scripture, one of my very favorites that I meditate on quite a bit, and it's Psalm 4610. And it's, be still and know that I am God. And um, I was in a season really of just searching out and searching out what my next move was supposed to be and where the Lord wanted me. And, you know, um, I think we just live so much in, in this world where we just want instant results all the time. And, and um, that's, not, that's not always what the Lord has and wants for us. And um, he just really stirred that scripture up in my heart. And the song that he gave me was really, um, it's called Be Silent and be still, and it's really just about trusting him, even when things aren't happening to our eye. It's in that faith that we have to trust and believe he is just orchestrating our next move, and we just have to trust in that, and that it's all in his perfect time. The song is called Be Silent, Be Still. beautiful song 
And I'm reminded of that, which Evangelist Shaneri had ministered on the Valley of Baca. And in having an attitude of thanksgiving, as we begin to just see this psalm in the light of the revelation of the Lord, how lovely is your dwelling place, Lord Almighty. My soul yearns, even faints, for the courts of the Lord. And um, prophet is brought out that enter into his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. For there in the courts, faith comes into the heart. Praise brings, a, as we begin to rejoice, even in the middle of our circumstances. So the soul of David was just absolutely yearning for the presence of the Lord. My heart and my flesh cry out for the living God. For David wanted his presence just like we do. Even the sparrow has found a home and the swallow a nest for herself where she may, ha where she may have her young, a place near your altar. And that is our heart, a place near his altar. Lord Almighty, my King and my God. So he's confessing, you're Lord of this situation. In passing through the Valley of Baca, which is the Valley of Tears, Lord, you are Lord of this situation, and I thank you. You're going to bring me out on the other side, just like those dear pilgrims. They, the dangers that they faced, I'm sure they lost children through disease. They lost husbands. They, wives became ill, and, and, but they, they continued on. They continued on. They were, some of them were mar martyrs for Jesus, and they had a heart of thanksgiving. And then going on here, blessed are those who dwell in your house. They are praising thee. They are praising thee. So there's a dwelling place. And you can make uh, wherever you're at the house of the Lord. We know there's the local church, and that's important. Uh, not forsaking the assembly of ourselves. But then there's a time when your house, when you're just in your house, or you're at work, you make it an abode deep within your heart, praising the Lord, no matter if the boss is mean to you, you're misunderstood, and they say hurtful things, and all those that live godly will suffer persecution. And, um, and so whose hearts are set on a pilgrimage, as they pass through the valley of Baca, they make it a place of well springs. The autumn rains also cover it with pools. They go from strength to strength till each appears before God in Zion. And I thought about that. Recently, there has been some situations I'm going through, and I found myself that as I prayed, I said, Lord, I'm willing to do whatever you want. Just give me peace to walk through this situation. And it's amazing. We can have joy in the midst of tribulation if we have a thankful heart. The thankful heart brings us to a place of humility. It says, the thankful heart brings a contrite spirit. It brings the ear of God. And so even in Psalm 24, as we enter into his gates with thanksgiving, then Psalm 24 brings it, brings it to light. We're entering his gates with thanksgiving so that the king of glory will come in. We start moving on with a thankful heart. We see the end of the rainbow. We see the promises of God as these precious women of God brought forth. The king of glory is going to come in. Who is the king of glory? The Lord mighty in battle. He's going to do your warfare. And that goes with the song, Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Praise God. Evangelist, generate. That takes me to the book of Second. Corinthians chapter 4, verse 15 to 16. And it says, All this is for your benefit, that which you're going through. Going through the valley of Baca, you're weeping, you're tearing, but you're going to rejoice. For your weeping may endure for a night, but your joy will surely come. If they did not find themselves in the valley of Baca, they wouldn't have any need to dig. What you're simply digging in this time where you found yourself is that you're digging the well and God is going to fill the well of salvation. For out of this will flow rivers of living waters. And for that river to flow, 
the well needs to be deep. So it's a good thing. And I found that in this second Corinthians, it just collaborated the word. Verse chapter 4, verse 15 and 16 says, No, this is for your benefit. What you're going through is for your benefit. If Jesus didn't go through that valley of Baca, you and I would not be here today. And so that the grace that is reaching more and more people may cause thanksgiving to overflow. Because of the things I go through, I'm able to minister to those who do not have hope. Because of the things that I have experienced, the things that I have seen, how God preserved my life and is still preserving my life in my valley of Baca. How God has never left me, would not leave me. How God will continue to sustain you, give you the strength. You grow from strength to strength. That you'll be able to persevere and endure because it's not by power, it's not by might. I can feel your pain because I've worn that shoe and I'm still wearing that shoe. I know what you're going through. So you don't say, woman, you just don't understand because you've not been there. We have all been there. We've felt it. We've gone through the valley. For everyone called of God must go through the valley of, of Baca to be able to get to your promised land. Amen. And one thing I found that is that what you go through is causing many more and more people to give thanks to God. Today I can say, thank you, Jesus, that I know you. Thank you because you chose me. Thank you because you called me. Thank you because you pulled me out of the path of destruction. I would have still been in the world probably wallowing in my ignorance and foolishness. But because of the price that Jesus paid in his value of Baca, today there is an overflow. Yes. Overflow oh. of God's grace. Overflow of God's mercy. Overflow of God's loving kindness. Overflow of God's joy. And that is the same thing that God is living with us today. He said, therefore, we do not lose heart. Though outwardly we are wasting away, yet inwardly we are being renewed day and day. That's the same thing he said in that, that scripture. In Psalm chapter 84 verse 7, it said they will receive strength. Strength. God was increasing them in strength. God's strength is being released upon his people as we thank him in our valley of Baca, as we thank him in our pains, as we thank him in our humiliation, as we thank him in that which the enemy brought upon you, that which caused you to weep in the night, that which caused you to shed tears. As we continue to give God thanks, he's making you whole. He is renewing your inward man and the glory of God will radiate from within to outward. And many who see and say of the truth, Praise be to the Lord who has done this great and mighty thing in the life of this brother, in the life of this sister, in the life of this one. And if God did it for them, he would do it for me. Your life is encouraging someone. God bless you. Amen. Prophet Amen. Lana. You know, praise the Lord because it's so beautiful. Because we're on a journey. That's what it is. You know, we're on a journey. But in this journey, we go through the things that Jesus went through. Okay, he went on the cross. But many times we have to go through, and we have to have a cross in our lives. And sometimes that cross comes as a situation. But as we go through it, we become stronger. It's like having spiritual exercise. Because when we go through things, you see, God's given us wisdom from above. We're not without help. You see, God said, I will open the windows of heaven, and he will pour out those things to us. So he gives us wisdom from above. He gives us the ability to know when we are in that place of lack. You know, when Jesus, he took the loaves and the two fishes, and he looked up to heaven and he gave thanks. Because he knew the key to looking up to heaven and giving thanks was to cause a multiplication. So any time that you're in a situation and you're just sitting there and the enemy thinks, wow, he's got you. You just begin to give thanks, and God will begin to multiply things in your life. You say, Lord, I thank you for joy being multiplied in my life. I thank you for strength being multiplied in my life. I thank you, Lord, for the goodness of the Lord being multiplied in my life. Jesus knew the key, and he said that it fed not only the 12 that were there, but the many that had sat down in, in, part, in 50s. It fed them all, and they had 12 baskets left over all because Jesus knew how to look to heaven and he knew how to give thanks. And so God is showing us 
any time that we're in a situation and we're on this journey, then it's time to look unto Jesus Christ, the author and finisher of our faith, and say, Lord, I need wisdom. I need anointing to go through this situation because I want to give glory to you. You see, we're entering dimensions of glory, beloved. We're entering from one faith to another faith, but also from one glory to another glory. And when we enter glory, there has to be a killing, there has to be a taking away of our flesh, our emotions, and our inner man becomes stronger. Our inner man begins to grow strong so that we can go through situations and that we know how to turn the keys of heaven. I want to read a scripture because Jacob, he's, Jacob awakened out of sleep. And I pray today that as you hear the words of God that are coming forth from Revelation today, you will awaken out of sleep because the enemy wants to put a sleep on us. He wants us to make us think we're in a hopeless situation and that God is just shutting his ears. But beloved, he is listening. And Jacob awakened out of sleep and he said, Surely the Lord is in this place. And I knew it not. And he was afraid and he said, how dreadful is this place. This is none other but the house of God. And this is the gate of heaven. Beloved, as you begin to give thanks, you're entering into the gate of heaven where God begins to multiply everything that we pray. He will multiply. You may be crying today, but it says that weeping endure for a moment. Get a hold of that word, moment. Moment is not forever. Moment is just a little season of time, just a moment in the time. But it said that joy comes in the morning. Joy comes when revelation comes. And when that joy comes is when we begin to thank you, Lord, that I'm not going to stay in this place of defeat. I'm not going to stay in this place. What the enemy meant for evil is actually a setup. I want you to say today it's a setup for me to go into a greater place of glory. I'm not only coming out, I'm coming in. I'm coming out of the situation, but I'm coming into glory. This is a setup to go in a great dimension of the glory of God. In Jesus' name, beloved. And this is where the scripture comes in, that all things work together for good Amen. to them that love God right. and are called according to his purpose. And going back to our Lord Jesus, who uh, it was brought out so well by Evangelist Shannari, is that we could never go through our Valley of Baca with hope and with purpose and destiny without our Lord Jesus Christ. So in moving into Philippians, the second chapter, it gives a, a little outline of our precious Lord Jesus' humility. And so Paul is exhorting the church in Philippi to be humble, to be united in, in the spirit of love. And sharing the same spirit of tenderness, compassion, joy, and to be like-minded, having the same love, being one in the spirit, do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others above yourselves, not looking to your own interests, but each of you in the interests of the others. In your relationships with one another, having the same mindset as Christ Jesus, and here it is, who being in the very nature of God, because that's who our Lord Jesus is, he is God, did not consider himself equality with God because he willingly humbled himself, something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing. He took upon himself the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness. I mean, coming down from heaven's glory and willing to come as a man to suffer insults and to be shamed. And being found in appearance of a man, he humbled himself. He became obedient to death, even the death of the cross. That was his baka. For they did not understand. They, as we know that they were blinded. Israel was blinded. And until that spiritual blindness is lifted, they cannot see. Until spiritual blindness is lifted from us, we cannot see until we, we say, and even as the Lord said, Israel must say, blessed is he who cometh in the name of the Lord. So in his own journey that he had to take, 
because he was making the way for us. Because he became a man, that is what saved us. He laid down his right of being God and humbled himself and went through the valley of Baca and made it a wellspring to become the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world, takes away your sin and my sin. It is so amazing. He, he became obedient even to the death of the cross. Now here is, as um, Prophet Zorna was saying, that there is a time, the promise of God is, is coming, the wellspring, making it a wellspring. Therefore God, even God, highly exalted himself, highly exalted him, and gave him the name that is above every name, at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow, in heaven and on earth and under the earth, every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of the Father. And that's why we're so thrilled this broadcast is going out to the other most parts of the earth to give you the good news of the saving grace, no matter what you're going through, no matter how much you have sinned, and I was ministering last night to, uh, in a rescue mission to all these broken men. And I said, you know, David did the worst sins of all. And yet he was found to be a man after God's own heart because he humbled himself. He had to pay the price for his sins in the natural. But in the spiritual, he received the forgiveness of God. And he was able to rejoice once again, rejoicing as a kissing cousin to thanksgiving. And so right now, I know it's difficult in your situation, but the one who can help you is the power of the Holy Spirit through Jesus Christ. You must take that first step of receiving the Lord. I, no matter where you're at, what you've done, he is there to forgive you, to embrace you, to lead you out of the valley of Baca and help you to make it a wellspring so that you will have hope again and faith will be restored and blessing and destiny will be yours. I want you right now, wherever you're at, to say, Dear Jesus, come into my heart. Forgive me, Lord, of every sin. Forgive me, Lord. Wash me in your blood. Write my name in your book of life. Baptize me in your Holy Spirit of love. I turn from Satan. I turn from all those ugly thoughts, and I turn to you, Lord. You are my hope and salvation. I thank you that you're going to lead me out in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Precious, precious one. Can you talk about deliverance from oppression so that they can get through their valley of Baca? Yeah, one thing I've come to understand that when you're going through the valley of Baca, God gives you that opportunity is because of his love for you. And that love is also in the book of John, chapter 2, verse 13. And the Lord said upon Mount Zion, they shall be deliverance and holiness. God said, he has chosen you. You are one of the remnant. And because of his love, you are going to find deliverance even in that place. For except a wheat of corn falls down and dies. It abides alone. God wants to make you rich in every way of your life so that that generous, that generous it, uh, generosity in you for every occasion will come through us, that we have come, we've gone through it, we're able to give out of the well, out of the abundance, out of that which we have gone through, and we're able to comfort those that need to be comforted in the days of affliction. For you to know that there are people who have also gone through what you're going through. And so today we are praying for you, according to the word of the Lord, that the anointing that is in the house begin to locate you in that situation. Right now there's somebody, you have been going through this pain on your neck for quite a while. And you've taken all kinds of medication. And you've been wondering, you've prayed, they've laid hands on you. Each time you receive a little relief and it just keeps coming back. The anointing is going down to you for the word of God is anointing. And that word is touching your shoulder right now. Check your neck like a dog. 
shake your neck. The Lord is taking away, breaking that yoke of the enemy from off your shoulder. For even in this value, you are not alone. The anointing of the Lord is with you. The yoke of the enemy is being taken off of your neck. It will not be there for Jesus Christ is with you. Satan, take your hands off God's people. There's somebody who has stomach ache. Receive your healing right now in the name of Jesus. I take authority and dominion against that spirit of cancer. Lose that daughter of Zion on your right, right breast in the name of Jesus. Let the fire of God destroy and eat up that cancer. For cancer is a name. We command the spirit of cancer out of that body right now in the name of Jesus. That person has been on the bed of affliction for too long. Yours is emotional breakdown. Today the Lord is reaching out to you. The Lord is touching you. You are receiving an overflow. You are even weeping as I'm talking. The yoke of bondage is breaking off you in the name of Jesus. I see the Lord comforting you with his arm round about you in the name of Jesus. Rise up from that downcast moment, that place where you have found yourself dejected and abandoned. It doesn't matter. It is not the end of the world for you. God is just allowing you to go through that, that there may be an overflow of his grace, that you may be able to comfort others. See from that light and the enemy will be defeated from today. You are loose and set free and at liberty for those of you who just came into Christ. Today is your best day in life because you have you have prayed that prayer, that sinner's prayer. I've said, Jesus, come into my life. So from today, you cease to walk alone in that valley, through that valley. For even when you go through the valley of the shadow of death, he said, I will be with you. Fear not. For today, God is destroying fear. For when God is with you, no man, no power can stand against you. Receive your healing in the name of Jesus. Receive your deliverance in the name of Jesus. For I see yokes and chains of the enemy falling off all God's people. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you, Lord, for moving upon these precious, precious people and that the word of the Lord will be sealed. And as I think about that wonderful scripture, that every knee will bow at the name of Jesus. And uh, Prophetess Lorna, do you want to comment no, on that? No, it's very beautiful because, you know, he, he gave us a very powerful, powerful word in Psalms 105. He said that he sent his, Psalms 107.20, he sent his word and healed them and delivered them from his destruction. So today the Lord is sending the word. And you've heard the word. And that was a word of knowledge that was coming forth. Because he is our deliverer. And the word delivers. So if you are in that state or you are in that state of bondage, wherever you may be in your walk, whatever may situation you may be in, God wants you to know, just like he spoke to the woman that was bowed over. She represented the church. He said, daughter, you are loosed because the word of the Lord comes to give us victory, beloved. It comes so that we can speak and declare and decree what thus says the Lord so that we can receive the healing because of the finished work of Jesus Christ. And as those words of knowledge came out through the airwaves today, you need to lift up your hand and say, that's mine. Because the minute that you declare that it is yours, it will be yours. Because God gave us a mouth to decree and declare the goodness of the Lord. And he has given us power as we walk in the spirit. So no matter where you are, he comes to every tribe and every nation. That we can wake up every day of our life and be thankful. If you can learn to be thankful for the small things in life. He will take and begin to multiply those things. Be thankful that you have a mouth to praise him, that you have hands to lift up. Maybe you're in a bed of affliction today, and maybe you're saying, I don't know how, what I have left to praise. Maybe you've gone through a divorce. Maybe your children are out there, and you say, how can I praise him in this deep place that I'm in? But I'm telling you, as you begin to praise him, because he is on the throne. If God allows you to go through it, he said, I'll never give you more without a way out. But, beloved, that way out is when we begin to say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for lifting us up out. He said, I'll raise him up out of the dunghill. I'll make the barren to keep house. God is a good God, beloved. And he is here through his word to bring deliverance. He's not only our savior, he is our deliverer. And he gives us that word so that we can speak it forth and come in agreement to the word of the Lord. I pray for everyone that you may be in that down place. You may just be in a place so discouraged. I've been there. 
I've been in a place so discouraged, like, G, like Peter, when he was sinking. Sometimes you feel like you've just been sinking. And all Peter could say was Jesus, he, all he could say is help. But Jesus was right there. It doesn't matter how low you feel the enemy has put you down. Because the lower you have gone, the higher you're getting ready to go. And so as you begin to call upon the name of the Lord, just call upon his name today. Say, Lord, help me and bring me out of this situation. He said, I will give you a new mind. I will give you new thoughts. I will fill you with joy. Because, beloved, because to whom much is given, much is required. So when you go through the hard and difficult places in life, it's because God has something special for you. And you see that you are going to be a testimony. We talk about a testimony, but our life is a testimony. Because what the enemy meant for evil, God says, I will turn it around for good. You know, Joseph was a good example of what I'm saying to you today. You see, Joseph had a dream, and he had a coat of many colors that his father blessed him with. It represented his calling. And his brothers were jealous of him. So they tried to take, they took the coat, they, they lied to the father and said, you know, a beast has gotten our brother. But you know, Joseph was on his way to the palace. And in the midst of that, he went through many situations. He was lied upon. He was put in jail. He went through many difficult situations. But beloved, he was on a journey. And he was going from the depths of being put in prison, being lied upon. He was on his way to the palace. And I'm here to give you a word from the Holy Spirit today. This is your day. This is your hour. And as you will take that word, God says that you're going to go from the low place to the high place. And so I just pray right now for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray that you will touch every person that's listening today. That you say, I feel like I have no hope. Jesus, beloved, is your hope. You feel like, how can I come out of this? But God is saying, I will bring you out of every situation. In the name of Jesus, I pray for those today. They will come out victorious in Jesus' mighty name. We give you the praise, the honor, and the glory in the mighty name of Jesus. And I have a word of knowledge for someone that's listening today. You're not going down in defeat. God has taken you to the greatest place, the greater place than you've ever been. And you will see, and you will walk in the glory of God because of those things. And it's a minister. And there's many others. I see a woman out there that you've been crying over a situation with your child. But God said as you begin to lay your hands on that baby, God will bring healing to that child because he's already done it on Calvary, beloved, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your Holy Spirit ministering today in such a wonderful, wonderful way. And Lord, give us an attitude of gratitude in Jesus' name. Now I want to share with you Jesus himself, wonderful Lord Jesus, who not only came as our example, filled with the Holy Spirit with great compassion, he was moved with compassion. There were ten lepers that came to him. And leprosy is the worst disease of that day. You are shunned, you are you're put away, and your flesh is literally, uh, literally taken off of you. It's probably comparable to Ebola, what, uh, this present-day Ebola, which kind of eats your insides, and within three weeks, you're gone. I want to share with you that the compassion of the Lord Jesus, who was so connected with the Father, and he, and he thanked always, he was always an example of thankfulness, of and you see him throughout the Gospels thanking his Heavenly Father, our Heavenly Father, for the compassion and the power of the Holy Spirit. You cannot separate the compassion from the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit is love, joy, peace, goodness, long-suffering. And so he healed all ten lepers. They were no longer outcasts. They were thrilled to be healed. And so they went on their way but only one came back to thank the Lord. Only one came back. And so we need to be thankful. And then when that one came back, the Lord Jesus asked him, he says, where are the other 
nine did I not heal ten? And so this, because of the thankfulness of this one brother that was healed of leprosy, he received the double portion. He received an extra touch just by being able to talk to the master. I want to share with you the great apostle Paul was always thankful for the people that were in the churches that he established. And I was looking in 1 Thessalonians chapter 1 to see his great attitude of heart. And he said, we always thank God for all of you, continually mentioning you in our prayers. We remember before our God and Father your work produced by faith. <coughs> Excuse me. Your labor prompted by love. Your endurance inspired by hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. For we know, brothers and sisters, loved by God, that he has chosen you. Because our gospel came to you not simply with words, but also with power, with the Holy Spirit and deep conviction. You know how we lived amongst you for your sake. You became imitators of us and of the Lord, for you welcomed the message in the midst of severe suffering with the joy given by the Holy Spirit. So the Thessalonian church had indeed gone through the Valley of Baca, but Paul taught them the very principles as he demonstrated thankfulness. Are we thankful for those who have helped us? Are we thankful? Are we thankful for just the little things in life? Because this is what brings us a soft and tender heart that the Lord can move upon? Or are we going to be just take for granted the blessings that God gives us? And even that produces pride. That can just, well, so what? Or I deserved it. No, it is by grace. We are saved through faith. It's a gift from God. It's not of works, lest any man should boast. Be thankful. Be thankful, and the gates will open wide for you of blessings. Just start thanking the Lord. I can recall the story of Corey Ten Boom during the Second World War when she was, uh, she was a, part of a, a wonderful family from Holland that hid the Jews during the Holocaust. And she and her sister were captured, but they began to thank God for the fleas because they those uh, soldiers, those wicked soldiers that humiliated the Jewish people and did terrible, terrible, terrible things it was the spirit of Satan himself. She began to thank God for the fleas because those soldiers would not enter the barracks because there was so much, so many fleas. So she began to preach comfort and hope to those Jewish people, sharing that Jesus was their Messiah and they were ready to enter into the glory land. Would we be thankful for fleas? I wonder. <laughs> I'm sure I'd have to think about that one. But what an example. And that's what First Thessalonians tells us, to give thanks in all things. For this is the will of God concerning, concerning us. Now, uh, Prophet Lorna made it very clear. It's not thanking us, thanking just merely for bad things, but what we can learn in knowing God will bring us out. Because all good things come from God. And so have a thankful spirit. And I pray in Jesus' name that as you begin to thank the Lord for your situation, that God is going to bring you out. Things are indeed going to change. Evangelist? I would like to end with saying that Jeremiah chapter 33, verse 11, I hear the sounds of joy and gladness the voices of bride and bridegroom, the voices of those who bring thanks offering to the house of the Lord, saying, give thanks to the Lord Almighty, for the Lord is good. His love endures forever, for I will restore the fortunes of the land as they were before, says the Lord. And what was just going on in my spirit when two of you were ministering awesomely, was the fact that every year we, we come to this season, the 11th month, 
the month of extra measure of God's beauty, you know, glory, blessings, joy. And then the other side, the side of the enemy, is a month of extra measure of all kinds of things, evil, troubles, and other. But for us, it's not. And God made me to understand that a lot of us every year celebrate this season, not understanding what we're thanking God for. We are just joining the back wagon. It's Thanksgiving time. We put off our things and we jump from place to place. We buy our talkies. But this year we are receiving the word of knowledge, the word of understanding, insight into the revelation of God's word that is preparing us to really know the reason why we're thanking God even when it's not like it in any circumstances that is what all of us have been talking about today that you will celebrate your thanksgiving this year knowing that your god is with you in that situation that that thing is working for your good that there will be benefit that will come out of it that you will have your world that is being dark right now filled with god's blessings that you will be strengthened that you're moving on to another dimension that you will surely get into your a promised land that God will not leave you, God will not forsake you. But that's what He's saying that the bride and the bridegroom are going to come out from their chambers. God said He's going to restore back to you because you're thanking Him in this impossible time, in this situation, in this circumstance. He's about to restore your joy, He's about to restore your peace, He's about to restore that which you lost, He's about to restore His glory that you lost, He's about to restore the fire. I sense a minister, you lost that fire that touch that presence that you used to so much enjoy you lost it for the past six months you know that something is happening in your life but today god said as you thank him this year knowing that it's not a time to continue to cry in your value of backup but to give him praise he said he will restore that fire upon that fire altar that from now when you lift up your hands you will begin to feel the fragrance of his glory that fire will be restored back to you god is with his people and his peace and his joy will forever endure forever god bless you in the name of jesus amen you know it's a time now to cry with a shout of victory we've cried with the natural tears but now it's time to cry with a shout of victory right and so when you begin to thank god there's a cry there's a cry in your spirit of victory that you are moving out of that place into a new place and you know even miriam miriam began to celebrate after they crossed the red sea but why couldn't she celebrate before they went over well because she didn't have that faith but today beloved god is saying it's time to walk by faith and not by sight right. it's time to look and see the glory you know jesus had said he looked beyond what he had to go through to bringing many sons unto glory he knew he had to go to the cross but he had something else in mind he had you and i in mind so we have to go beyond and see with the eye of victory and know that what you're going through today is not just for your victory, but for the victory of your family and those around you. You're going on to this new place so that you can, be beloved, give that wisdom and knowledge to those of your children and of your family that God will never leave us in that place, but he's taking us to a new place. We're moving on just like Israel camped in tents because they had to move. And it's time that God is moving his church from one place to another. And you know what? Today, it just God has put it in my heart to pray for Cross TV. This is a beautiful, beautiful network that is going all over the world. So send your prayer requests. Tuck in your love donations. Help support this ministry. This ministry is touching not only your life, but millions and millions and billions of lives all over the world. And it's going to, to begin to multiply and go into other nations and other networks. And even as you make it happen for somebody else, God will make it happen for you. So, beloved, if this uh, ministry has been a blessing, word of his kingdom, let them know, but also... Cross TV as a whole, begin to write and, and begin to thank God for this network, touching your life, your family's life. Those are in war-torn countries that we will see a beloved, a harvest, Amen. and tuck in your love gift and begin to pray as God gives you that in your spirit. Begin to pray for this network because God said we're going to see the greatest harvest of souls 
that this world has ever seen. The best is yet to come. Yeah. Let it begin with you. You say, I'm only one person. It only takes one person to cause somebody else to join in until we become one of many, many others that will make it happen, and we will see that harvest of Jesus Christ. Amen. Go ahead, my dear. Sing your song. <laughs> What I wouldn't give to have lived back in the day when David did the beautiful music he made on his heart, trying to escape so he could be where you are. Sometimes I think I know how David felt, cause sometimes I feel that way myself. So I rise and shine with the sun And thank you for the mercy that comes in the morning Knowing you love me the way that I am Even when it seems like you shouldn't Is a constant reminder of how compassionate you are Back in the day, at the cross, your only son came and he paid the cost. And now he lives in my heart and I'm forgiven for the nights that I roamed in the dark. And when I walk in peace and in harmony, and when I use my voice to sing the melody, it's a constant reminder of just how thankful I am. Just how thankful I am. God bless you, keep you, make his face shine upon you and give you peace. Turn in again, tune in again to the word of his kingdom, second and fourth. Fridays, and also call in if you have a prayer request. We love you.